Well, hi there, I'm Dr. Newsom, and I'm glad you're here today. Today we're gonna to talk about inflammation. Let's get to it. Inflammation and the immune system. What is inflammation, first off? Well, inflammation is the response the immune system has to being irritated. Okay, we, we have multiple types of inflammation. We have acute inflammation that comes and then it goes again, right? Um, that could be like a bee sting or a, a, you know, something like that. And it comes, you got it and it's gone. Okay, gone the next day. Uh, you got systemic inflammation where the whole body gets involved. It could be a rash or something like that. Okay. Um, then we have chronic inflammation and chronic inflammation is an inflammatory response that gets started, but it keeps getting rebooted. Okay. And every time it starts over, it grows and it grows and it gets worse and worse and worse. Um, in, you know, let's talk about the gut real quick. In the gut, you may have heard of leaky gut, okay? Uh, in the, in, when the gut becomes inflamed, it gets irritated, okay? It becomes inflamed, it starts to expand, okay? It swells up, right? As that happens, the gut wall becomes hyperpermeable and bigger, you know, bigger things from the gut content start to float into the bloodstream, triggering more inflammation, okay? Um, I use this process, I, I define this process as the three I's, okay? We have irritation triggers inflammation, inflammation opens us to infection, okay? And that's very important to understand. So let's talk a little bit about this chronic inflammation. You know, chronic inflammation is something that I have to deal with with my patients on a daily basis, okay? All these folks that are chronically ill are suffering from chronic inflammation. All chronic illness has a chronic inflammatory component, okay? So what happens is the immune system has its inflammatory response. The tissue, wherever this inflammatory response happens, swells up. Extra fluid moves into that tissue, and if it doesn't move back out, it starts to accumulate Toxins, just like stagnant water accumulates whatever is in its environment, it starts to accumulate toxins and becomes an irritant itself. Okay, and as that happens, it starts to grow and starts to that inflammatory response starts to happen in more and more tissue and starts to spread across the body. And eventually, chronic inflammation can involve your entire system. So what happens here is okay. So as inflammation sets in. Uh, tissues start to lose their integrity. They don't operate as well, okay? So when, you're, when your gut gets inflamed, okay, and it becomes more permeable, uh, that means more things start to irritate the immune system, bringing up the level of inflammation in the body, making more things uh, pro-inflammatory, okay? And you get more and more things happening. Here's a real interesting thing. Uh, when, the, when the gut becomes irritated and swells up, the blood-brain barrier swells up at the and expands at the same rate. It's proportionate. So when your, your intestines get irritated from bad food or an infection and so on and so forth, okay, the blood-brain barrier also expands and stretches, okay, uh, causing the blood-brain barrier to become hyperpermeable. So more things float into your brain than should be floating into your brain. So you get bloating in the gut and you get brain fog at the same time. Okay, and this, you know, this communication starts to get me messed up. This, in turn, causes hormone imbalances, okay? So we, when tissues are swollen, the hormones can't get to the cells and do their job properly, all right? So we get, chronic inflammation causes all kinds of problems. Um, autoimmune disorders are the outcome of chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation is what produces the autoimmune disorders that people suffer from. Well, now that you understand all this, we need to discuss how to reduce inflammation. Okay, so first off, inflammation is something that triggers swelling, and swelling triggers pooled fluid, okay, excessive water in the body, and all that has to drain out of the system in order for the inflammation to go down, okay? 
So in order to do that, we have to open up detox pathways. And so we need to look at colon cleanses, liver cleanses, uh, colon hydrotherapy, um, coffee enemas, saunas to, to loosen up and drain the lymphatic system. Okay, these are things you have to start doing if you're dealing with chronic inflammation. Uh, number two, we have to look at digestive function. If the digestive system is not functioning well, uh, it will trigger systemic and chronic inflammation. It's going to keep triggering inflammation, an inflammatory response from your immune system. So we need to give ourselves um, digestive enzymes, probiotics, fulvic and humic acids, these things that are just paramount to gut health, to healing the gut and helping the gut uh, function properly. And then finally, we have to give the immune system what it needs uh, in order to have an, an appropriate inflammatory response. So when, when you get into this chronic inflammatory state, the immune system becomes so feeble, so, so tired, so wore out, that it just has what I call a knee-jerk reaction to uh, anything, okay? And it can just become hyper-inflamed just to, to anything. And so we have to give the immune system things like turmeric and ginger and digestive enzymes, probiotics, things like this that help enable the immune system to have an appropriate inf inflammatory response. So if you're struggling with chronic inflammation, you, this is something that you have to get under control uh, before it does detrimental damage to your health. So for more information, take a look at my website. I'm here to help. I'll see you soon.